it's such a beautiful day today. It's 28 degrees at the moment. I've just reached the uh, four mile mark. Yesterday I ran 10 miles and I'm trying to run another 10 miles today along the Thames. Uh, today is the hottest day of the year. It's plus 30 degrees at the moment with zero wind. Um, it's very warm and for the first time since starting running last October I brought money with me to stop in the shop halfway to buy water. The furthest I've run so far is 30 miles so tactically what I normally do is fill up on water in the morning, drink gallons of it which sustains me for about 10 miles so I might have to resign myself to the fact that I need to get a hydration vest but this run two days of 10 miles feels fantastic that's Kent over there This is day three of running 10 miles every day. It's Tuesday today. That's 10 miles Sunday, Monday and today. Today is my next big run. I tried this uh, route uh, probably about two months ago and I completed 13 miles. This is a 15 mile route, so I've just been dropped by Tracy 15 miles from the house. Psychologically, I like running back um, long distances rather than doing loops or running away from the house halfway, turning around and coming back because it feels better to run home. We've had sunshine, blistering hot, 30 degree plus sunshine for the past two weeks. I've been running in very humid heat, so it's great that we've had a break in that. Today's the first day it's rained in about two, three, four weeks. The furthest I've run so far as part of my training for the marathon has been 13 miles. As I say, I'm 15 miles from home and I'm hoping that I'm gonna be able to run that. I wanna beat 13 miles today. Um, I've stopped halfway between here and home in the car and stashed some water and some fruit. Okay, we started mile one. I'm two miles in now at a steady pace. I'm about 60-70% of my, I don't know what you call it, maximum pace, where I'm able to talk and run. If I run at full capacity, I can't talk. I've learned that this is the best way to get further distance. I'm also listening to a podcast today, a crime podcast about a court case. No music.
थाया That's me at five miles. Five miles and I'll stop. So this is the fourth day. For the last three days, I've run at least 10 miles. So considering that I've run 30 miles in three days, I'm gonna say out loud, I'm gonna try and do 15 miles today. So I've got another 10 miles to go. I'm feeling pretty good at five miles. I'm just coming up to my stash of water and some trail mix. So five miles down. I've been running for over an hour now, non-stop, at 60-70% pace, which feels good. So, a small carrier bag with some fluids and some food. This is actually Scarlet, so I took it out the freezer, she put this in the freezer for when she gets home from school. Well, I think it's Ribena. Homemade Ribena, that is. I don't know why I said homemade Ribena, because that's just blackcurrant in water. Need to find a bin. I've just hit seven miles. nearly halfway, well halfway to my target, whether I achieve that today. I'm feeling pretty good. I've eaten too much trail mix, Head a bit nauseous now. I've maintained the same speed for coming up to seven and a half miles, which is great. I've now hit the trails. This trail will take me all the way from the town that I've just been through, about five or six miles along the Thames, to my final furlong home. This is the road that Maddie calls the road to hell. Sped up a little bit, tiny amount. <sighs> Maddie calls this path, which is about two and a half, three miles long. She calls it the road to hell. <sighs> because all of my walking events, she's walked it with me a hundred times. And every single time, it's the worst bit as she describes it, because you can see exactly where you're going for as far as the eye can see and it's no worse feeling. That is the road to hell done. And now, onto the farmer's field, which then takes us onto the path to the Thames. And then, it's a straight run home past the fault. God, I don't know how far I am now. I'm past the point of caring. Trying to get past it without scaring it. Come on, bud. 
Let me get past. There we go. Go on, go that way. Poor bird. I think his wings are wet. I've put music on now. The podcast ended. I've listened to a 10 hour podcast this week. Just running. But now I've put on 90s dance music. I'm not even a fan of 90s dance music. But I need the energy. And it's given it to me. So I've lost a mile somewhere. I reached, reached the two mile to home point back there. And I'm still at 12 miles. So I've lost a mile. So I'm going further down the Thames path for one mile. Well, mile, half a mile, half a mile back, which will get me to my 13 miles, two miles home, 15 miles. I don't want to do this. I want to stop now. But I need to do this. I'm tired, but my pace, my pace is the same. I've maintained exactly the same pace. Steady, which is great. I'm at a two mile mark, two miles to home. Okay. That's it, 15 miles. Oh, nearly three and a half hours of non-stop running. That's the furthest I've ever run. And I wanna say it feels great. Oh, it does feel great. I'm very happy with that. It wasn't the fastest I've ever run and it certainly wasn't the easiest. The conditions were good. The weather was good. Rain held off, but it was just enough moisture in the air to keep me cool. I'm pretty much soaking wet. As I say, it's been raining non-stop thunderstorms for the last 12 hours straight. So all the brambles, the bushes, the weeds that I've run through, my legs are cut to shreds. I'm soaked through to the skin. My feet are soaking wet because I'm wearing road trainers, which were about as waterproof as a toilet roll. But all that aside, that's all irrelevant to the fact that I've just run the furthest distance I've ever run in my entire life, non-stop with a really good average pace at 60 or 70% capacity. I'm very happy with that. Now I'm home.